Imagine being a black man sleeping in your own house and accidentally activating your medical alert necklace, which then sends police to your door, who then end up killing you. This unfortunate true story from 2011 is now an award-winning film with a 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty special. I don't, not too people get that. The legendary Frankie Faison joins me now. Uh, welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Uh, what inspired you to take on uh, this role? Tell us about the role you've taken on. Well, it's the role, like you say, it's of a black man. He's, in a, he's an ex-Marine. He's, um, he's um, suffering from heart injury. He's suffering from bipolarism. He's um, a PTSD, um, and he's a senior citizen. And he's all those things. And um, the reason I took the role, first of all, is because I'm an actor who's always drawn towards very interesting character roles to play. And I got this script and I read it and it was just like from page one, it was me saying, I want to do this part. I want to portray this man. I want to tell his story. But since getting involved in it, it's become much, much larger because I never even realized the political and social ramifications of doing this role. It's like, um, it's, very, it's very large and I have a huge responsibility to it and to, um, and to this film. Uh, did you know who Kenneth Chamberlain was before you took on this role? I live in New Jersey. I live about one hour from White Plains where this whole incident took place. I never heard of it. There are people in my town who did hear of it, but not a lot. It was quickly covered and then swept under the rug like many of our stories are. And so no one ever, no one knew. So I was really shocked to, to hear that this happened so close to my hometown, to where I live. Wow. And, and that had to be uh, not only a learning experience, but an emotional ride to, to learn about the details of the case. Did you connect a lot with the Chamberlain family as well? Not during the process of the filming. Everything I got was mostly from the script itself and from the writer, David Madell, who did an amazing job of writing this script. And I gathered all my info. I mean, I thought I was just going in to do just a, another, you know, another good character driven role in a film and it's become so much more and uh, I didn't get to meet his family until afterwards I met Kenneth Jr. Uh, about a week before filming had finished and um, it was an honor and pleasure to meet him this is a driven young man he's looking for accountability for his father and he's done so much you know to promote to promote the protection and well-being of other victims of, um, of police crime. So it's, um, it's, it was a great honor to meet his whole family and to hear them say that they were honored to have me play their father, uncle, cousin, friend. That's, uh, to me, that's all I ask for in the work that I do is respectability and, and truth. Absolutely. And you've done that for decades. Uh, I have my own thoughts, and I'll tell you later what, I, what my favorites are. But it, you've been in just so many films and, and legendary television shows as well. What's been the role that you've carried with you uh, the most across the last five decades of your brilliant career? Well, right now, it's Kenneth Chamberlain, a <laughs> senior. But it's, um... <laughs> Good answer. Good, that, that's how you stay employed. That's, that's a professional. He's right. You know what? The one that I'm here advertising. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, but I've been so fortunate over my 50 years in this industry to play some amazing, amazing roles. And, and one that come to mind in particular would be probably Gabe in, um, in, in Fences on Broadway, which I did for over a year with the great James Earl Jones and Mary Alice. And um, of course, Death of a Salesman, King Lear, um, and uh, television roles. Um, one of your favorites, I hear, uh, playing um, Commissioner Burrell in The Wire. Also, the Banshee episode playing Sugar Bates, the bartender, and Luke Cage playing the, the grand, playing the, um, playing sort of like the voice of reason for the young man uh, as he goes out and tries to do the right thing. But I've done so many 
so many roles that you that have been so important to me and they all stick with me and i must say that doing all those roles they prepared me to be able to do this present role kenneth chamberlain because he is a summation of all those of all of those characters roll into one i had to bring everything in my arsenal to find the truth in this gentleman and uh it was a challenge and it was a it was an exhausting wonderful trip to take yeah it, it, and it's a, a brilliant trip that you take us on and we get to watch you play the character with integrity and depth and nuance and that is in fact what you've done throughout your entire career and, and i think you're right i mean first of all you're right that that your commissioner Irvin burrell is my favorite role of you i mean you had a role on the most iconic show in the history of television as far as I'm concerned. And you were on for all five seasons of The Wire. You know, obviously our dear brother Michael K. Williams who passed away uh, didn't make it all the way through. His character uh, was killed. Um, you know, other great kids, season four is probably the best season of the show, but those kids only made it through season four and five. You managed to, to be one of those characters that made it all five. And while I didn't like Irvin Burrell as a police commissioner because of some of his cynical decision making, I got to see his humanity and his complexity. Um, how important is it for you when you're looking for a role to, to f identify characters who may be good or bad, but have depth and nuance? It's, it means the world to me. It's what I'm all about. If I can't find that depth and nuance, the humanity of the character, the humor, then I don't feel as if I can do the character, as if I can do my job. Because we all have that in us, no matter what kind of person we are. And I, my role is that if I'm going to play these kinds of characters, I have to find those elements about them to make the audience not just turn off to me. They've got to be, I've got, they've got to be able to find their way into the work that I'm doing while I'm trying to tell my story. So that means the world to me. And I appreciate your comment on that because that's what I've, you know, that's the biggest joy that I have is, uh, hearing that kind of comment and, and striving to attain that in everything that I do as far as my work is concerned. Wow. And my life too, I guess, because they are very closely resembled <laughs> in a lot of ways. A a absolutely. That, that's when you have the best life, when your professional and your personal are so tightly connected and it doesn't feel like a burden, but it feels like a joy to do the work that you do. And I know you're doing a lot more work. I'm hearing through the grapevine that you are working on a film. Uh, you're in a film about uh, the life of the great Mamie Till, Emmett Till's mother. It's, you know, this was, this was very difficult for me to come from Kenneth Chamberlain and go into Emmett Till oh. because these are two stories that, that emotionally they are parallel to each other and one is in 1955 and one is contemporary. It happened, you know, uh, 10 years ago. It was very difficult for me, but luckily I don't have to carry Emmett Till the way that I carry Kenneth Chamberlain, but uh, it's still, I learned so much about Mamie Till. I mean, people, they mentioned uh, Emmett Till, but the story really begins and ends after his death because it's the work of his, the work and courage of his mother, Mamie Till, who just uh, plummets forward the civil rights movement and, and, and and heroicism as far as women are concerned, as far as parents are concerned, it's an epic. And it, um, it was an honor to follow uh, Kenneth Chamberlain with this film. But now I need to do something that's going to make me laugh. <laughs> I need to smile. <laughs> I need to laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, These are very I hard need something, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I need a buddy I need, comedy. I need, I, need, I need something, man. Yeah, I need some white chicks or some coming to America, or something like that. Now I'm ready for one of. I'm ready for one of those, you know, because it's um, it takes a lot out of you. It really does, because in order to get to these characters, I've got to pull them out of myself, and that means I'm just exposing a lot of the stuff inside of me, and I have to find the truth in that. And, it's a journey, and I want to do. I want to do right by all the all the all the roles that I play. So that's uh, that's um, my I'm actor's so, journey. I'm, I'm so glad you pointed that out. I think a lot of people don't appreciate 
uh, the emotional side of being a creative. You know, they think about you as just going on screen and performing, but they don't realize that you have to live with these characters. We, those of us who write, you know, we live with the characters. These characters occupy space in our lives and in our heads, and you're sitting at the dinner table and you're thinking about these characters, and you're worried about these characters, and you're wondering about these characters, and people don't get that. And so the emotional toll that it takes to play certain folk is, is considerable, and I'm glad you said that. Before you go, though, I want to ask you one more question, and that is uh, some advice for the next generation of young artists. I mean, to stay in this business for five decades, it takes more than a notion. How'd you do it? What's, what would you tell the next generation to do to have longevity? Well, commitment is paramount, you know, um, and uh, I think training uh, is, is, is very important as well. And the, uh, you know, you have to stick with it. You have to stay with it. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to grind it out to work. You have to be willing to do the leg work to do to get. I mean, and I say leg work. I'm not talking about going up out hustling jobs. I'm talking about doing jobs when opportunities come by, taking the jobs like this Kenneth Chamberlain film. This was a very small film, a low budget film uh, with not hardly any money, but it was a film that had so much soul and was so. It was it was so much in my wheelhouse that I just said, I'm going to do this film because it's important. So I think that for the young actors out there, don't look for don't look for success and fame. Look for stick to it. Stay with it and uh, keep working and let your work speak for itself. The truth and honesty that you bring to the project and to your work and um, and just keep working, do all kinds of things. No job is too small if it feels right to do in your heart. So that would be my advice to those young people out there. Well, that is beautiful advice. And again, I want to thank you for your time on Black News Tonight. But more importantly, I want to thank you for giving us five decades of genius, of brilliance, of beauty, and of amazing representation of black people and all of their complexity, their depth, and their brilliance. Thank you so much, my brother. Everybody, The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain, it debuts on HBO Max this Friday, which is the 10th anniversary of Chamberlain's death.